Hey guys, before we jump into the fishing this week, I just want to mention to you there is a benefit tournament for the folks at We Are Washington, uh, which is a, if, if you're not familiar with them, it's a great organization that's based in Texarkana. I urge you to just take a minute and Google search We Are Washington Texarkana. It's, it's purely for the benefit of kids. It, it's a great organization. Jones is involved in this. It's a big bass tournament on Millwood this coming Saturday. You can see the names at the bottom there to contact and uh, there's going to be some great silent auctions at a place called Cross Ties. Now, if y'all don't know what Cross Ties is, it's a private event venue in downtown Texarkana. Yoder carried me to it there a week ago when I came in town. It is a very cool space. There's going to be some really great silent auction items, dinners included with the entry. And I'm going to tell you right now, one of the, one of the uh, uh, options up for bid will be a day in the boat with me, which might get a little bit of money, who knows, but filming a show. So check it out, please participate. And if you're out of town and you still want to help out, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just making a donation. Uh, thanks guys, uh, let's get to the fishing. Well, good morning guys. You guys saw a few days ago when this boat first touched water, that was when Taylor and I, Taylor from Yellow's Marine Electronics took it out in, uh, at, in Texarkana. And they kind of did their, uh, they got everything rigged for me. So to get everything ready to fish out of the boat. They got my graphs set up. They got the, uh, the direction set on both my graphs and my trolling motor. They linked everything Bluetooth, so I'm ready to fish. So this is actually later that same morning. I came over to Lake Welch. There's one, two, three, four, five guys in the parking lot. Looks like all bass fishermen. And uh, I'm just trying to get the boat rigged. I've just put my GoPro uh, holders on here. And uh, we're going, I brought a few rods. I didn't bring a bunch of rods, but we're going to go out and just poke around a little bit. I'm hoping there's a frog bite. So that's what I'm here for, try to get a frog bite. But we're going to go and just check out the electronics. The next time this boat will be in the water will be for money. It'll be at the Sealy uh, a week from Friday at Rayburn. So I wanted to make sure everything was Make sure I knew how to work everything. So that's our uh, that's our goal here today is to go fish it, put a, maybe a little bit of time on the motor, not much. I'm not gonna run around a bunch. I don't have a lot of time, but this is a place that's got a soft spot in my heart. My, my partner, Bill Johnson, who died a number of years ago, who I club fished with back when I fished with the Dallas Hook Setters. This was always on our rotation. Uh, this, uh, a Hawkins specific tournament, and then we had Wood County tournaments out here where we had several lakes you could fish. and. I have, it's been, gosh, it's easily been 20 years since I've been here. So I'm real curious, the, the lake looks good, but we're gonna go fish around a little bit and uh, just be outside, I can't wait. So let's go check it out, guys. <laughs> what made me think about this is tying a jerk bait on. So we were fishing a hook setters tournament here. And again, this is probably mid nineties. And if I remember the players right, I think I was in the boat with Blake Balch, God rest his soul. Good friend of mine passed away a few years ago. And the other boat was Billy Ray Johnson. Many of you guys know, helped build the ballpark in Arlington. Works now, I think he works for the Hunt family now. And Paul Rojas, I think was the other guy. And we were where the warm water comes out. It was a winter tournament. And Billy Ray sets up on, on jerk baits. And we're right next to each other. I mean, we're, you know, the channel's not real wide. And Billy Ray sets up on this fish and immediately breaks him off. And he goes, oh my gosh, that was a giant. And before he can get giant completely out of his mouth, one about that long comes up between our boats, jumping, trying to shake that jerk bait out. And to say we've never let him live it down would not be fair because here we are 20 something years later and I'm still telling that story on Billy Ray Johnson. He just dropped his head and shook his head. God, we laughed and laughed. Club fishing is a lot of fun. It really is. I mean, from another guy who uh, in the club decided he wanted to make his own fish attractant, so he put a shad and if I remember right, a dead frog and a crawfish all in his wife's blender and turned it on in the kitchen. I don't think, I think she got a new blender out of that deal, but club fishing's a lot of fun. All right, I think I'm ready to go. Let's put some rods up and we're gonna get after it.
So as I mentioned at the onset, this is the uh, the first day I've been in the boat, and I kept hearing this buzzing. And I'm like, man, something's shorting out. And I got around, looked around, listened, and couldn't find anything, and kept hearing it. And I laid down on the floor, crawled up onto the dash, and I'm like, where? But but get under there, and it'd get quieter. And I'm like, what is going on? And I finally realized, this is just before this, right above my head is a power line coming off the power plant there at Welch. And it was the electricity. There's so much juice going through those lines. You know, quarter of a mile from that plant, it they're buzzing. And I'm like, okay, well, there's more of a buzzing sound coming from. That's four pound liter. <laughs> oh, this is trouble if he gets me in that stuff. This is trouble. There ain't no lift in him when he's in that stuff. Let's see if we can get a hook out of him. Come here, Chubbs. Don't know where that little tiny hook is in his mouth. Golly, he choked it. Mm. On the rooster tail, I can see him up here behind the grass, but they're super spooky. And it's just murky enough, you really can't see far out in front of you. I picked up the rooster tail. And it's actually a decent little fish. Oh, four pound leader, probably two and a half pounder. That thing is just so, I mean, it just don't freak them out at all. Those high schoolers out there and they can't catch a fish and there's anything shallow at all, I'm gonna tell you, this will work. I probably upsized to like a six or eight pound leader according to what you're around, but you can't get a much bigger leader or the little rooster tail loses its action. That one nuked it and he had two or three buddies with him. <laughs> That's a little eat bounce. You know, as I said at the onset, I, I went thinking I was going to frog fish, but I hadn't talked to anybody, hadn't seen the lake in 20 years. That was just purely what I kind of thought would be happening. It was not happening. So I actually went up, uh, threw a frog a little bit, flipped the grass a little bit, and then saw a fish move behind the grass in the inside edge. Stuck my nose up in there, and there were little fish, yeah, little fish, two to four pound fish everywhere. Uh, a lot of the fishing I did was during the rain. You're not going to get to see those fish because I turned my cameras off, but I caught a whole bunch of fish and had a whole bunch of fun. That's why you don't flip a bed with four pound line. Dad gummit, that fish smoked it. I set the hook and we were done. I'm gonna get that fish and get that hook out of her mouth. I'm gonna just go to braid. Dad gummit. That's okay, we'll catch her. We'll get our hook back. That's a really nice pin hook. High dollar hook. Oh, I got a cramp in my leg. Oh, <laughs> cramp, cramp, cramp. Cramp, 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 cramp. <sighs> she banged it, dunk. She said, give me that little thing. Give me, give me, give me. And I gave it, gave it, gave it. And Pulled her off. On the hook set. Dunk. That's so sad. I stood there knowing you ain't got a big enough line on here. And I still kept fishing with it. And she smoked it. And I popped her off. Dunk. But dunk.
Bucks. Some oh, set up broadside to us again. I think that fish might be three pounds. It's so hard to tell back here. I learned that lesson a long time ago in a tournament on Cedar Creek Lake. I foul hooked a five pounder. It was over behind something I couldn't see very good. I actually boated the fish and told my partner, Bill Johnson, I said, we got to turn her loose. We did. And I said, we'll come back. And I said, that fish won't bite for a while. So we'll come back. Lo and behold, as soon as we left her, a guy eased over there and caught her real fast. Real fast. Look at here. There's my line. First time I had her hooked. Where's that line go? That's the bait I just caught her on. She sort of choked it. I'm gonna cut that hook off so she survives that. It's still one of the coolest things Lou's made. Those mock cutters. I'm gonna do what I'm about to do right here. Let's cut that hook off. Whole hook out of her. Look at that. Those cutters are unbelievable. Nice fish. Thank you, That was fun. You are none the worse for wear. And what starts is a trickle. Rain suit on, got to fish some more, caught a bunch more fish, but I uh, had to put the GoPros up because I'm not running them on batteries because they're not waterproof. But guys, I've got a video coming this Friday, Thursday, excuse me, uh, where our uh, Texas Park and Wildlife Freshwater Fisheries Advisory Committee meeting, we went out to Hamilton, Texas, where all game wardens, Texas game wardens, and park rangers are trained. I'm going to give you new respect for Texas Park and Wildlife folks. And, and specifically for game wardens. What they go through, I had no idea to become a game warden. So please tune in Thursday. Uh, I think you really enjoyed that video. It's not gonna be a long video, but it was fascinating to me. And uh, we'll see you guys on uh, Thursday.